Hi there, my name is Cuppy Kates, and welcome back to Clan Gen with Mist Clan. Now, Mist Clan has suffered a grave tragedy, an ambush of these creatures that can no longer be hidden from this large clan we have. Something is going to have to come out as the truth, but now that is being put on our new leader and deputy, after losing both the leader and deputy in the last episode during the ambush. We lost poor Mist Star the second, essentially, and Bright Gaze the deputy. They tried to defend the clan valiantly, but they did not survive. And so Slate Mist, the medicine cat, approached Maple Star. And due to having many, many successful, strong litters, named her leader. And Maple Star took the place on the High Rock. And Hen Ivy is called to be deputy. Since the two had shared so much time together in the nursery, having and raising kits. So Maple Star is worried that others are judging them. She kind of took this place quickly, and even though it was with the Medicine Cat's blessing, that's a lot. To lose a leader who was not a leader for very long, and for her to take the place of her leader and mate. I'm sure most of the clan is actually happy to see her up there, but that doesn't make Maple Star feel any better because... But Maple Star doesn't know this. She's only 44 moons old, she doesn't feel old enough to be a leader, and yet she is there. She hopes dearly that she can lead this clan in a different direction and fix this horror that is looming over them on a daily basis. Hen Ivy, however, is not bothered by her position. She craves the taste of rabbit right now, so she's thinking more of food than anything. But also, I think she might be trying to distract herself from the very hard reality she's been placed in. She now knows that these aren't just evil cats or rogues. This is something beyond what they're used to, and she's not really even sure if there is a way to fix this or fight these creatures, and so she's distracting herself with her hunger. I relate with that on so many levels. <laughs> we have Slate Mist, our medicine cat, who is staring off into space. A lot has happened, and although she is a bold and smart female, she has had to explain much to these new females that are in a position of authority, knowing that they may have learned this darkness and ruined any innocence they have had forever. I'm not sure that Miss Star was truly open with Maple Rump about the creatures. It's supposed to remain a secret. That must have been a lot for Slate Miss to just say, well, this is the reality. These cats are still thriving. Despite this harshness of reality they've been dealt, they still want to go on. But how do they do that when such a danger lurks on the tree line? We still have 29 cats strong in this clan, which is excellent. For now, they simply must continue patrols. But Maple Star and Hen Ivy and Slate Mist may discuss ways to actually fight against this darkness or to simply leave. But food still must come into the clan. Borders must still be protected so other cats do not get harmed by these horrible creatures. And so patrols must go on. It seems as though Fallen Flight has fallen for a two-leg trap. They were trying to get food and unfortunately did not move fast enough. And now the two legs have taken them to somewhere that the clan cannot reach. So Fallen Flight is no longer with us. On a much lighter note, however, it looks as though our patrol did come across a loner and they have chosen to join with their litter of kits. I do wonder if these four cats feel conflicted allowing any other cats to join the clan knowing full well that they may be terrorized by these creatures. I wonder what they were thinking. 
Maybe this loner and Kits were desperate and they thought, well, if we can protect them, we can save these Kits. I would hope that is what was in their mind. So let's go and see these Kits. We have Frond Claw, who is so lovely. Oh my gosh. A female senior adult, so she is older. Perhaps she's finding it hard to take care of her kits now. She's an ostracized warrior from another clan. Her experience is average. She's quite patient and smart. A beautiful calico. And she has brought with her Vol Kit, a young female kitten who's a bit of an attention seeker, and Damp Kit, who is a young male kitten. Quite daring he is with a ticked pelt, and he is looking around the camp with wonder. Now, unfortunately, the rules do state that we are supposed to have a cat that comes into the clan go on patrol on their own. However, she is a queen currently with kits and so we're not going to do that and i think both maple star and hen ivy would not want to hurt the kids if something happened to frond claw so for now they are not going to send anybody into the forest instead we will let a moon pass so seed fur was bit by a snake but miraculously survived creek stem is injured by enemy warriors after accidentally wandering over the border creek stem got a scar but also a claw wound. Mortail has earned their warrior name, Mortail! Larkheart's water in the lungs has been cured and Creekstem's claw wound lead to an infected wound. That is not good. That happened very quickly. Hopefully Slate Mist will be able to cure that. And now that these cats have received another loner and kits, they are wondering if they should close the borders. Some cats believe it might be good to have more hands, more paws, more claws to fight these supernatural creatures. But on the other hand, are they subjecting innocence to this devastating plague that they are suffering from? These creatures that want to kill cats along the tree line, should they be subjecting cats to that? So at the moment in this moon, our borders will remain open. So it looks as though our cat Snek was able to find a cat near the Thunder Path. They bring the cat back, nurse them back to health, and now they have joined the clan. And this is Randy, an elder, who is faithful, a fantastic teacher. We do love fantastic teacher elders, so the kids can have something to uh, listen to. Can I just point out how beautiful little Mortail is? I just, I want so badly to get Art of Mortail. She's an altruistic warrior, so she's, she's like super sweet and selfless, and she's got these little morning glories in her hair. She's so pretty. So another moon has passed with discussions of possibly closing the borders. There are still arguments going on on whether they should or not. I'm going to start rolling to see what percentage uh, means they close or don't close the borders. But until then, we will keep patrolling and see if more cats come to the clan. Uh, Whiskerheart has retired to the Elderden and Creekstem's infected wound has been cured. So Slate Mist still has it, even after all the tragedy the clan has suffered. Another loner joins the clan with a litter of kits, and the more this happens, the more the cats are worried with the kits joining. Is this the right decision? Should they be subjecting these cats? It is looking more and more like these cats want to close the border. But now we have a young adult female named Tiny Pond. She has joined the clan, but she is a bloodthirsty warrior. Perhaps she made a good case for herself saying that she can fight and defend and maybe that's why the cats allowed her in thinking this cat could help us. She could help us fight these creatures and so they allowed her to come in. She has brought with her Aloe Kit, a young male kitten who's a bit of a bully. 
We also have a Breeze kit who is a young male and is a bossy kitten. So uh, she's got some kits that uh, are following in that bloodthirsty footsteps a little bit, but it could mean warriors for the clan. So perhaps this is a good thing. We are now at moon 33 and Fleck Eye lost their tail to a badger. Those darn badgers. <laughs> Creekstem's claw wound has been cured. So Creekstem is going to be just fine and should be able to return to hunts now. So a new female has joined the clan who is also a medicine cat. So originally in the rules, you're only supposed to have one keeper of secrets, which is what the medicine cat or healer cat stands for. But they are bloodthirsty. <laughs> Why we're getting all these bloodthirsty cats all of a sudden, I'm not sure. <laughs> but she is here. And Slate Mist is a little worried about her because she is a disgraced medicine cat. We will see how she does, but we don't need any more problems for this clan. They have enough problems as they deal with the treacherous creatures in the forest. They don't need turmoil inside the clan as well. We're about to find out if this was a good idea or not. Not much happened this moon. So Beam Goose earned a scar protecting the kits. Good job, Beam Goose. And then Peat Pelt has gotten joint pain. So hopefully Slate Mist can take care of that, but otherwise nothing's really happening. It's been very quiet. And the clan's starting to wonder if perhaps the creatures are happier because they got fed so well that may lead to bad thoughts amongst the cats. So strangely enough, another medicine cat has come out of the brush from seemingly nowhere, Breezefish, who was formerly a loner as opposed to being a disgraced medicine cat. He is confident, a great healer, with a beautiful pelt, but the clan decided to let him in. Perhaps they are wondering with enough cats who are medicine cats, they can help heal those injured by the creatures. But the creatures usually attack and kill, so I'm not sure what they're thinking here. Maybe they're just desperate. But then we also saved a kit who was alone without a mother, a young male kitten who was very sweet, he was abandoned, it seems. That's why the mother was not found. But our sweet Mist Clan cats have taken him in despite the horrors that remain outside the forest. It is the 35th moon. A lot has happened. Randy Whisker got a, their paw stuck in a two-leg trap and earned a scar. Brambletail has earned their warrior name. Freeze Moon has earned their warrior name. Cedar Paw started their apprenticeship. Pete Pelt's joint pain was cured, and Volkit has gotten white cough, unfortunately. But now Brambletail, Freeze Moon, and Cedar Paw will all have to patrol alone to prove their skill. But not just that, the clan cats have made a decision. It is time to close the borders. With the creatures having not attacked for quite a bit of time for five whole moons, Maple Star has decided that she wants to protect other cats from the horrors that they may be walking into. And so she has had her cats, her warriors, go out on patrols to keep others from coming in. Which means if any patrols for right now come across cats that may want to come in, they cannot proceed. The borders are closed. Unfortunately, Sweet Cedar Paw, to prove their skill went to try and get food from a two-leg trap, but was caught and taken by the two legs. Cedar Paw did not survive their first patrol alone. So the cats came across another healer, but they decided it was best to refuse their offer for their healing skills. The other two cats do survive their lone patrol, and I think because this is the woods challenge, instead of Cedar Paw having been taken by two legs, they will have been attacked by the creatures. I think that that follows our storyline a little bit better. Perhaps the creatures are even getting smarter and they are making traps very similar to the two legs, and that's what's happening. And they're getting eaten by getting trapped by these horrible creatures inventions. Ooh, that makes it more spooky, doesn't it? That they have intelligence and the ability to craft things similar to humans do. 
Perhaps they're even shapeshifters. The 36th moon, Quickfur earns a scar protecting the kits. Thank you, Quickfur. Volpaw has started their apprenticeship, and so has Dampaw. They will have to be tested for their skill. And then Volpaw's white cough was cured, so that is very good. Very, very good. Volpa and Dampa successfully have their first patrol alone. They did not perish. They survived. There is hope for the young ones in the camp. So it looks as though our patrol comes across the bloodthirsty creatures. They face off with them, but unfortunately, before they finally leave, Beam Goose was taken and eaten by the creatures. There was nothing the other two cats could do. And then a lot happens. Snack earned a scar protecting the kits. Creekstem has realized that she cat doesn't describe how they feel anymore. Alopaw has started their apprenticeship. Breezepaw has started their apprenticeship. Breezepaw seems to have picked up a neat nettle while playing out in the camp. Steamclaw earns learns of a new prophecy. I wonder what Steamclaw knows. Maple Star will always love Miss Star, but has decided to move on. And then Snack has gotten a runny nose, probably from protecting the kids. I bet the kids made him sick. <laughs> For any of y'all out there that have kids, I'm sure you know. I don't have kids, but I have friends who have kids, and they always talk about how their kids make them sick, and I think it's so funny. <laughs> It's sad. I feel bad for them, but it's like, oh, they're just, they're little sick carriers, but we love them. <laughs> Frond Claw is injured after messing with a two-leg object. They got a scar, but also bruises. Larkheart fell into a hidden burrow and could not get out at 137 moons old. <gasps> Larkheart passed away. Oh no. Seedfur went missing and was found dead at 84 moons old. And then Snack's runny nose turned into White Cough. What is going on? You know, we did let some bloodthirsty cats into the clan and I'm growing sus. Steamclaw is legit talking to herself right now. And Tiny Pond wants to be the new deputy. I'm concerned for her clan, y'all. It is now the 40th moon. Dappled Paw has started their apprenticeship and will have to patrol alone. Sneck's white cough has been cured. Thank goodness we wouldn't want to lose Sneck. Charstream has gotten fleas. Blaze Cry fell into a sinkhole and died at a. What? What is going on? Did they fall or were they pushed? Frond Claw's bruises has been cured. I think maybe they're being pushed. Something sketchy is going on. Something very sketchy, and I don't like it. And I want to hear what y'all think in the comments below. And we will have to find out if the sketchiness is coming from any of the cats in the clan in our next episode of Miss Clan, coming in the new year. Pretty exciting. <laughs> I hope y'all liked this episode. If you did, give the like button a tickle and a poke. Subscribe to join our family if you haven't already and jingle that bell so you're notified of when I post Miss Clan and find out what is all this sussiness going on right now. Also, feel free to join Discord or follow me on Twitch and you will find the link to both of those in the description below. I love you guys. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time for more of Miss Clan their struggles. Bye!